Hey everybody, Graham here. Thanks for joining me on Thursday afternoon for podcasting for brands. This is all about, well, as it says on the tin, podcasting for brands. What do you do? And if you are a comms manager, how do you manage a podcast? So we're going to look at some case studies today. And um, it's specifically looking at B2B podcasts today and the difference between B2B and B2C podcasts. So the reality is, is that uh, they're very different. And I'd like to share some insights in how they're different. Importantly, how you'd structure them differently. Because if you do a B2C podcast as a B2B podcast and a B2B podcast as a B2C podcast, you're going to get it wrong. So allow me to save you some time and face in the next 15 minutes. Podcasting for brands, B2B podcast. It's specifically today, I want to show you about the alignment process, three steps when it comes to setting up a B2B podcast. And follow these three steps, simple process, that you'll save a lot of time. And if you're doing this for a client, you can help align the client, bring them on board, help them manage expectations as well. So a little bit of background. Uh, we've been doing, as a company, B2C and B2B podcast for over two years now. We started out doing all and then focused specifically on B2B podcasts. So Pickle & Co. is a B2B podcast agency, probably the only B2B podcast specialist agency in the world. So we got a bit of experience. We specifically choose not to do B2C podcasts. Uh, because the model is very different and we can excel at B2B podcasts and help comms heads, PR agencies, marketing heads and CEOs produce better podcasts, better conversations. If we can focus specifically on B2B as the delivery. I think as well, a lot of people don't understand that there is a difference. People assume that podcasts are podcasts and therefore treat them all the same. And that's how we started out. When we started Pickle & Co. two and a bit years ago, we didn't know the difference. So I assume now a lot of people don't know the difference between the two. And we've learned the hard way. And allow me to share some of those insights today to save you the time, unless you want to spend two years getting up that learning curve. Absolutely, you be my guest. But, you know, leverage our mistakes and our experience learned. That's going to save you a lot of time and money. So what is the difference? Well, it's all about alignment. When I explain to podcast clients podcast success, I say it's like landing a plane. It's all in a smooth approach. You know, if you land a plane at a steep angle, full flaps, steep descent, strange entry angle, banking, with winds, you're going to crash unless you are the best plane pilot in the world. It's going to be very difficult. That means that with a smooth approach, you are able to land smoothly. You don't face any issues. But that takes a lot of pre-preparation, pre-planning and alignment. It's all about alignment. So what do I mean by alignment? Basically, get your metrics right Get your metri metrics right and the podcast will fall into place. I see a lot of people start podcasts, stop podcasts, get lost, become inconsistent. They're doing it one a week. Now they're doing one a month. Now they're doing it one every two months. Now they're doing two a week. The inconsistency kills podcasts. We say at Pickle & Co. that consistency builds quality. So the key is having a consistent podcast and the key to consistency goes back to alignment which is what are the metrics you're going to use to measure success so when we go into any project with a client when we start our own podcasts the number one question we ask is how do you measure success what is the picture of success for this podcast and importantly how do you measure it so your choice of metrics is everything with your podcast and I would guarantee if we were to ask people today about how you would measure podcast success, 90, 95% of people would choose a metric only relevant to B2C podcast. And yet they would then apply that to a B2B podcast and fail because now they're coming in at an angle like this, too steep, 
There's no way that they can make this work. And that's why podcasts become inconsistent because what started it with a lot of gusto, yeah, we're doing a podcast, guys. Woohoo. First two podcasts, great. Number three, it's getting a little bit tough, but you know, the momentum is still there. <sighs> podcast number four, podcast five, podcast six. And oh, do we have to do this podcast thing now? And the whole thing falls, fails, crashes. And you know, the reality is podcasts are like relationships. It's an investment over time. Any investment takes time. You have to be in it for the long term. If you're in podcasting for the short term to produce four, five, six podcasts and hopefully get it, you know, those key results, you're going to be disappointed. You have to invest in the long term, like relationships, connections, friendships. It takes time. So therefore, you've got to make sure that you have the right ROI in your head, the right measure of success for your podcast. Because when your enthusiasm starts to fade, you're now going to be looking at why are we doing this podcast thing? And your marketing manager is going to be saying X and your communications manager is going to be saying Y. And you don't know at what started out as a bit of fun now becomes a burden on the business. So moving forward, let's talk about the difference between B2B and B2C podcasts, specifically looking at the metrics and the differences in these podcasts, because this is absolutely key. Your choice of metrics really would define success. Now, for most people, you'll probably define the metrics of success with a B2C podcast in terms of your audience, right? You'd probably say that the number of listeners, the number of downloads defines the success of your podcast. But that's not the case with B2B. So allow me to share my screen with you and I'll walk you through the difference. B2C podcast. You may be familiar with This American Life, Serial, Joe Rogan Experience. I love all these podcasts. These are the podcasts that I grew up on effectively. And they're great. They can get 100,000, a million viewers, listeners per episode. Fantastic. Yet they're not B2B podcasts. If you look at Tim Ferriss, for example, he can get a million downloads per podcast. And the problem is, is that business owners, communications heads, business leaders go into a B2B podcast thinking that they need to be the same to get the same kind of results to be you know a, a worthy media entity but the point is is the b2c podcasts are media that's the difference there is a difference between media and meetings and the metrics are completely different there is a difference between content and connections and that's why we have to understand the difference fundamental difference between a b2b and a b2c podcast these are b2b podcasts all of which I have been involved in it, my team has helped put together the content is different obviously but the key is the metrics we use and the formula the process we use for b2b podcasts are completely different you can't go into a b2b podcast thinking that you're going to be another this american life and people do and they fail consistently because they're looking for a million downloads, 100,000 downloads. You won't get there with a B2B podcast. And the great news is you don't need to get there to have a valuable podcast. You can get results with 100 downloads, 1,000 downloads. If the people who download your podcast, A, are of high quality, B, are relevant, and C, are given some kind of clear call to action, that you want them to undertake. And this is what we call the conversation funnel. Now, I'm gonna come back to the conversation funnel in a minute, but let me put it to you this way, is that in the B2B space, most podcasts fail because they don't have any kind of funnel whatsoever. All they're doing is they're creating this sort of side gig we're going to do a podcast because we think it's important. That's a great starting point. But soon you have to build a funnel around your podcast. You have to take people somewhere with your podcast. Now, let me put it to you this way. 
If you have somebody's attention, you have the most valuable commodity right now in business. Attention. People say data is the new oil. And I'll put it to you this, that it isn't. Because data is everywhere. We are drowning in data. There are billions and billions of data sets sitting on company servers right now in vast data lakes, dark data as they call it, sitting there unused and overwhelming communications heads, marketing managers, business heads. They don't know what to do with the data. In fact, there's so much data, it's becoming valueless. And we've had data for years. It's not like data is new. You know, if you look at maps, maps are data. We've used maps to navigate, to conquer kingdoms, to find new lands. We've used data in war to predict and analyze troop movements. We've had data for thousands of years. It's not new. So it's not like we suddenly given this new commodity, which is highly valuable. The point is, is there's more data than ever. IBM said, I think in a recent report that we have produced more data in the last two years than we have in the entire entirety of human history. Think about that. In the last two years alone, more than everything else added up. So what does that mean for the future? It means that we're going to exponentially increase the amount of data that we have. And here's the point, ladies and gentlemen, that take climate change. Go to Google now and Google climate change. You will get 1.1 billion page results, 1.1 billion. You know, we have all the data we need about climate change. Now, the difference between data and action, there is a gap here. And the important part is, what is that gap? We've known about climate change since the late 19th century. I think there was a Swedish scientist, Svante Arrhenius, who presented the idea of fossil fuels and global warming in 1896. That's 125 years ago. We've had climate change data for 125 years, folks, but we haven't done anything. Now, it wasn't until a young Swedish teenager, Greta Thunberg, stood before the United Nations. She presented data like everybody else had. But how was she able to get people to act? She was able to get people to act because she had a better story. She stood before the delegates of the United Nations and said, you have betrayed my generation. And it was a more powerful story than anything told before. And it was the story that got people to act. And that is the point that attention is the most valuable commodity in business today. Because if you have somebody's attention, you can use it to create change. Data is really the raw material. It's the attention that is the new oil. Attention is the most valuable currency. Attention is your biggest cost in marketing. And attention is the new currency of leadership. So I'll put it to you this, that if you have their attention, use it. A conversation funnel is how B2B podcast leaders can use attention. Let me show you how this breaks down. Once you have somebody's attention, you need to take them in direction of action. For example, we helped a B2B podcast host launch their podcast by using their webinar. It's very simple. By announcing the podcast, and I'll show you in upcoming Podcasting for Brands how you can combine your webinar and your podcast. But simply combining these together, in one day, one webinar took their Spotify followers from roughly 20 to just over 120 as a result of doing the webinar. So they got 100 Spotify followers. They were not getting great results on their their existing podcast. So we came in, we helped them, we helped them sync their, their webinar with their podcast and we got them a hundred followers straight away. And that's the great thing as well, because everybody that comes to the webinar is also potentially interested in learning more. They want to indulge in the content and then you can take them into the podcast because once the webinar's done, the webinar's done folks, what happens next 
well, do they just kind of drop off and then Monday morning they float back to their memos and their email chains? What you want is to give them something more that they can indulge and find out about so they can find out about the backstory, find out more about what you've done with this subject area. So let's talk about the big fails that people come across when it comes to B2B podcasts. And of the key here is that almost all failure in B2B podcasts comes from a lack of alignment, not aligning your assets and not having your assets aligned with your business objective in podcast. Number one, most common fail is buy my stuff. Let me explain. Your conversation funnel exists to perform two functions in business. One, to acquire and secondly, to influence. You need to know the difference. Are you using this asset, this webinar, this podcast, this post to acquire or to influence your connections? Do you want to acquire new connections, revisit new connections, old connections potentially, or influence them to take them along the journey to upsell or to commit or get them over the line? Now, the problem is that a lot of podcast hosts, when they go into B2B podcasts, is they don't know the difference. They don't know if the podcast should be acquiring or influencing. And often what they do is they look at the B2B podcast like a B2C podcast and think it's an acquisition play. In the B2B context, a podcast is advertising real estate. It's a million eyeballs, earballs that you can sell ad space on. And if you've listened to Tim Ferriss, that's all you get. This podcast is brought to you by Bullet proof coffee. Now, that's okay if you're a B2C podcast because the end game is to sell advertising real estate. But in the B2B space, forget it. If you want to sell stuff, just do Facebook ads. Don't use that podcast as real estate to sell stuff because it's not as effective as Facebook advertising. And I've seen a lot of people use B2B podcasts for this purpose. I've seen them try and sell software packages or sell computers and laptops, even printers in a B2B podcast. Like why? Why spend all that money and time and that attention to sell stuff which you could easily sell with a Facebook ad? It doesn't make sense. So the number one fail is to buy my stuff, which is basically placing your podcast as an acquisition play when it shouldn't be. There are much, much better ways of doing this. Use Facebook ads. I'm not going to try and convince you that your podcast is a better option to sell stuff than what else is already out there. Use your podcast for what it is designed to do. And we'll talk about that in a minute in the B2B space. The second part is using your podcast as a side gig, which is I have my podcast and nothing else. Now, this is a great starting point, but it doesn't go anywhere. You need the podcast to convert attention into authentic action. So you have the awareness which is the webinar. Then you have the podcast, which is, okay, I know about you. I want to find out more about you. So I'm going to go and indulge in the podcast. And now I indulge in the podcast. I've built a relationship with you. You now have the authenticity. You have the permission to take me to the call to action, which gets me over the line. Problem is, is people just launch a podcast and leave it at that and then wonder why am I not getting any results? The reason you're not getting any results because you're not giving them any results to get. You know, you can't hit, hit a target unless you can see it, right? So you've got to give them a target. What do you want me to do? Now I listen to your podcast, what do you want me to do? Do you want me to subscribe? Do you want me to sign up? Do you want me to come to your event? What is it that you want me to do? You have to tell people and once you build a relationship with them, they will do whatever you ask them to do. It's as simple as that. The last part is the wasted webinar. This is happening everywhere around us today. Wasting all that attention. Spending all that time putting together a webinar. All that time. The people are busy. They're coming to your webinar. You've got their attention. Now what do you do? What do you do with that attention? You have to convert it. I think 95% of webinars that I've sat in don't take people anywhere. And you may not have anywhere for them to go at this stage, but I'll show you at the end of this webinar what you can do if you don't have a website or you know, a landing page set up or a campaign set up for your, your audience. A very, very simple hack, which I'll show you at the end of this webinar.
But if you're not doing anything in terms of moving the conversation forward, you're wasting the opportunity. All these people doing webinars out there, they're kidding themselves if they're not then taking that time that you've spent together and using it to take somebody to something else. They could be getting a PDF, they could be signing up, they could be joining a program as a beta tester, whatever it may be. It's all wasted. And, you know, the, the problem is, is that if you look at the social media landscape now, it's like a fire hose. I mean, I did my calculations that the average LinkedIn post lasts 36 to 48 hours, right? So if you're pushing stuff out on LinkedIn, if, you know, and you're doing that every single day, and you're spending two hours, you know, maybe an hour posting, responding, an hour, like, you know, just the whole process is around two hours on every single post. That's 720 hours a year for one, two posts. 720 hours for one and a half posts, right? That's how it works. Because once that post is gone, it's gone. There's no way I can go back and get your old posts. There's no archive. There's no Google indexing of your old posts, right? So effectively, you're spending 700 hours a year for one and a half posts, two at most. Is that a good ROI? And it's the same with webinars. All these webinars, what's the asset that you're building? Because I can't go back and watch the webinar. I can't access it through Google. I can't spider it with my search engine. So once this is done, folks, it's done. It's gone. That time is lost. What's the asset that we're creating that survives, that outlives us, that, you know, tonight when I'm sleeping and, or when you're off doing something or having a meeting, that people can interact with this content? What is that? That is the asset that we need to be creating, and that's the conversation funnel. So if you're just doing webinars, you're absolutely wasting an opportunity. The webinar needs to go somewhere. And right, I'll show you right now how we can do that. And the key is stick around to the end of this webinar and I'll show you how to get the PDF. If you want all these notes, stick around to the end. Stick around for another five minutes and I'll give you the link where you can get the PDF from today. And you can take it all away with you. There you go. I don't have to create a website for you. I don't have to send you to sign up for anything. All you have to do is send an email to the address I'm going to give you in five minutes. How about that? Easy enough. You can do that. Everybody's got a presentation that they can share. Everybody can share that at the end as well. So why not make that the lead magnet, as they call it in marketing, that people can stick around for? It's easy. How about that? So three steps finishing up today. Three steps in your alignment process. Start small. Keep the, you need to manage expectations and also align it with your business objectives. And here's some tips on how you can do that right now. So the, the key is defining your business objectives. It's landing the plane. What are we trying to do with our podcast first? Are we using this to get meetings? Are we using this to create brand authority? Are we using this podcast to generate social media engagement or an audience? Wh whatever it is, you need to know what that metric is because there comes a day when you need to measure success. The old Peter Drucker saw is what's measured gets done. So, you know, if you can't measure it, you can't manage it, right? If you want something to be successful, you need a metric. What is the metric of your podcast? If your metric is purely audience, you're in the B2C space. But if you're building a B2B podcast, you don't need to get 100,000 downloads to make your podcast worthwhile. Use metrics such as meetings or reach outs. I'll talk about those in a future webinar about how you can define your success through different metrics. For example, how do you get meetings out of a podcast? I'll show you how you can do that. Or, you know, how can you get people reaching out to you? I get people reaching out to me all the time on LinkedIn. I was walking down, I, it seems extremely random, but I'll give you an example of how reach outs work. I was in Fukuoka in Japan, crossing a road by the traffic lights, um, walking across the traffic lights. I was halfway across the, the crossing in the middle of the road. And Obviously, it's Japan, so it's surrounded by lots of Japanese. Somebody who was clearly not Japanese walked up to me in the middle of the road and said, hey, you're that podcast guy. And this was in Fukuoka, which is right down in Kyushu in Japan. I'm like, hang on a second. How did you find me here? I didn't even live in Fukuoka. I lived in Tokyo at the time. That's how random it is. 
And the irony is, is that a podcast is audio. So he's not like seeing my video every single day, but I was a thousand kilometers from home in the middle of the road, in a random city, in a random place, in a country where clearly most people don't speak English and somebody just stopped me in the middle of the street. And either it was a very good guess or that just shows you the power of podcast. I get that a lot. It happens in streets. I was walking out of a co-working center before COVID hit and uh, I was just walking into the, the co-working space and somebody came walking out the other way and said, podcasts, just as they're walking out the door. I was like, yeah. And I thought it was the guy I was supposed to be meeting. But it wasn't because I walked in and the guy I was supposed to be meeting was there. I thought, wait, I thought that was you. No, I don't know who that guy was. And to this day, I don't know who he was. I mean, how random is that? But the point is, those are kind of the random anecdotes. But a lot of people do reach out to you in less random styles at conferences, through LinkedIn, at events. You know, they'll reach out to you because you are that guy, right? And in our brains, there's a little box we're marked X, reserved for you. What is your X, right? You're that guy that does that thing. What is that X? And podcasts are a great way of defining that. If you want to be the AI guy, then be the AI guy. Start a podcast. Start talking about AI, AI, AI. Connect with all the people in your network about AI. Talk about AI. Post on LinkedIn about AI. And make that your goal. I want people to reach out to me to talk about AI. Because that is extremely valuable. What if they are clients? What if they are partners? What if they are potential distribution channel for you? Think of the value of that. That is far more valuable than 100,000 downloads. Start small. Dream big. Start with a podcast. Agile storytelling. I'll talk about agile storytelling in a future episode of podcasting for brands. But Every time we sit with clients, we always practice agile storytelling. I won't go into too much depth about what agile storytelling is right now, but the crux of agile storytelling is this. You don't need to finish your book before you need to start talking about it, right? So you have a story which is evolving and adapting as you go forward. You don't need a finished product before it's worth sharing with the world. And that's how you should treat your podcast. Start. You know, Simon Sinek talks about start with why. I think it's nonsense because most people don't have a why. Steve Jobs never had a why. All the greatest entrepreneurs never had why. It's people who start podcasts all over never have a why. All they want to do is start a podcast and talk about stuff that's interesting to them and talk about it with people that matter. So rather than find your why, find your start. Because you know what? Your why doesn't usually make sense until later on. Quite often people don't know what their why is. And then they get in the game and then their why only makes sense in hindsight. Like Steve Jobs talks about joining the dots in hindsight. And Soren Kierkegaard, the philosopher, the Danish philosopher, said that we have to live life forwards but understand it backwards. It's the same with your podcast. You don't need to have this overarching theme. This is exactly what I'm going to talk about. The best place to start is your start. Just get started. You have a rough idea of what's interesting. You have interesting people to talk about. Let's get started. That's agile storytelling, which I'll go into in depth in a future episode. Talk about how you can actually get started. We'll talk about content planning, content mapping, and also how you can choose the right guests to evolve your agile story. And lastly, most importantly, layering your communications projects into the conversation funnel. If you have a webinar, sync it with your podcast. We'll talk about that at a future episode of Podcasting for Brands. Use your webinar to get people to the podcast. I showed you earlier about how you could get 100, 100 
subscribers to your podcast. Think about that as a, a spike, a kickstart to your podcast project. And it doesn't require much effort. Very, very simple hacks that you can use. And we'll show you a sample screen that you can use for your webinars in future. And if you are on somebody else's webinar, use it as an opportunity to get people to go to your podcast. Very, very simple because the people that want to sit and listen and you have your attention, sorry, the other way around, you have their attention. Those are the people that already trust you. Those are the people, the fans. You only need 100 fans to build your tribe, folks. Give them an opportunity to indulge. So use your webinar. Use the, There are countless startup accelerators right now doing webinars, startup programs doing webinars, and none of them, very few, except the ones we're working with, very few of them are taking all that that effort, all that energy and directing it where it should go. It's just building awareness. But it goes back to the social media firehose folks. You can build a lot of awareness. Awareness means nothing, right? Awareness means nothing. You know about the Cadillac brand, right? You're aware of it. Yeah, we're aware of Cadillac as a brand, but when was the last time you bought one, right? So in the modern media landscape, attention landscape, awareness means nothing. What matters is attention. So once you've got their attention, convert them. Align your comms projects into a, a conversational funnel. But you know, you can start small. Start with the goal, layer on the podcast, then look around. You don't have to start a webinar. Somebody else in your company may be doing a webinar. If that's the case, look at how you can sync together. And you can send the podcast back to the webinar. That's what's great about it. You know, you can have people go to the podcast, then discover the webinar. How cool is that? You've got this circular interest in attention. And before I give away any of the secrets, um, maybe it's some time for one or two questions and then stick around. I'll give you the PDF from today. How about that? Is that a good deal? So if you have any questions, I think you can ask in the chat. I'll take one or two questions now. And um, round up, I'll give you the email address where you can get all of the slides from today. So uh, first one, first question, how do you measure podcast metrics apart from audience and downloads? Thank you very much to Vedant. So first question, uh, measuring podcast metrics apart from audience and downloads. So obviously, if you have a podcast platform, your most, most available metric is the downloads. Uh, you need to have the access to the podcast platform. If you're on Spotify, if you're on iTunes, they'll give you metrics. Uh, they'll give you top level metrics. You may be able to use a feed service like Simple Feed, which can aggregate the metrics for you. But these are all audience metrics. So the question I guess, Vedan, is that you're asking outside of those, what should you measure? Well, there are three metrics that you can measure outside of audience uh, for B2B space. Meetings is obviously one, which is very qualitative in the sense, well, not qualitative, you, you, it's measurable, quantitative, but qualitative in the sense you need to get people to report it to you. In a small team, obviously, that's easy. You can get people to tell you as and when you get meetings as a result of your podcast. Uh, another one is the reach outs that I talk about. And you could, for example, uh, get your team to report back and score, tally the number of reach outs that you get from your podcast, which is really important to measure because every one of those reach outs is worth a thousand downloads, right? So, you know, you could easily get distracted with the vanity metrics of your audience. However, you need to focus on really the, the most important B2B metrics. You can get a million people download your podcast, but if nobody reaches out, nobody meets you, it's a waste of time, right? The last one being um, the number of meetings that you get in the actual podcast itself. Now, this is probably the most overlooked, overlooked metric that B2B podcast owners uh, have and ignore, which is if I did a podcast, so for example, I did a podcast with Tony Fernandez, CEO of Air Asia. For me, that meeting is worth a lot of money and a lot of credibility in many, many different ways. You can imagine meeting the CEO of a large organization like that the value to their business can extend many, many different dimensions. Obviously, the fact that they then became a client of ours is one, so that has monetary value. The fact that then they gave us insights and learnings became another, and, and thirdly, the credibility that comes from that meeting 
that social proof as well as the uh, the access to other projects as well. The fact you do business with AirAsia will open up business with other clients as well. So think about the value of that meeting itself. That was one meeting. And if I put it to you this way, I mean, I've had a few thousand people listen to that podcast with Tony Fernandez. But if nobody listened to that podcast, that alone, that one meeting would have been a metric worth scoring because I had a meeting with a senior business leader and it resulted in business, right? And interestingly, when Tony walked into the room, I remember him coming into the room and just before we were doing the podcast, we had all the team there. We'd flown to Kuala Lumpur, you know, it'd been rescheduled, canceled, rescheduled. Tony had to go meet the prime minister of Malaysia, canceled it. He had to go meet somebody in Singapore, canceled it. Eventually we got the call. It was happening Thursday. This has been going backwards and forwards for months now. Eventually, we get to Kuala Lumpur. We're in the meeting room, that the assigned meeting room. The recording, I think, was at twelve thirty scheduled with Tony. I hadn't. I'd all met. I'd met him before already before this, so it wasn't the first time. But I hadn't had direct communication with him about the timing of this, and it was being filtered through his comms people. And then somebody comes running into the room, like all kind of in a panic. And this was like quarter to 12 and we were just kind of setting up our recording equipment. And the comms person comes running in, into the room. And uh, we were just kind of setting up and they said, there's a problem. And I thought, oh no, like it's gonna be canceled. Like Tony has canceled on this last minute. We're actually in Malaysia now. This is like bad news. Like we'd flown, got the 6.30 flight to Kuala Lumpur and he's gonna cancel us. And the comms person said, uh, Tony, Tony's PA hasn't been told about this meeting. So there's a bit of a schedule mix up. And I thought, oh no, he's gonna cancel. I'm gonna strangle this guy. And he said, uh, he can't do it at 12.30. Um, but he's coming now. And like, you could see, I was with the team at the time and it was like, oh my God, Tony's coming now and we're not set up. Boom, everybody acts in station. So we're all sort of frantically setting up our stuff. Luckily, we've done this hundreds and hundreds of times. So it was just like, as my engineer says, just like any other show, action stations, Tony's coming. He walks into the room and he comes and he's lounge pants he's sort of very tony fernandez style he walks up and he says hi yeah i shook hands with him like i said hadn't seen you for months because I, I saw him last time at newton hawker center so just having a quick chat and he goes i have one request for you and i i knew what he was going to say i said he, in, in my own head that tony was going to say i've only got 15 minutes to do this podcast and i was going to go tony like this is just a complete nightmare. We cannot do 15 minutes. So I just sort of deep breath, brace myself for it. And he said, um, I want to start a podcast business. <laughs> and I was standing there ready to do this podcast. And I thought, wait a minute, Tony, did I get this right? He didn't say to me, I want to start a podcast. He said, I want to start a podcast business. Anyway, so that's another story I'll tell you about another time. But the point being, so you think about the value of that meeting to you, to me, anybody in business. If you can get a meeting with somebody of that level and you can get an hour of them and really connect with them at an emotional level. And if you, I think if you watch the podcast with me and Tony, you see this is not a formal business connection. This is very personable. You know, you can see the body language, you can see the connection. How else could I have got that? How else can you connect with leaders like that? So think about that. If you're a comms head, think about how you could put your leaders right in there with other leaders and connect at that very personal level. You know, you could get them business deals, business connections, which you could not get in any other format. Yes, these people may meet for like 15, 20 minutes at an event, but then it's like, whew, they drift away. They may meet on a webinar, but then it's like, how do you actually connect with that person? But if you sat and talked about their stories, like at a deep emotional level and talked about the why, think about the connection you're creating. You're not creating a coffee meeting because you can have a coffee meeting. You've had thousands of these things and you drift away and forget about them. You're creating a real connection, an asset that lasts forever. That meeting with Tony Fernandez that I had that's out there is still out there. 
you can go after this webinar and Google it, Tony Fernandez podcast, and hopefully it's in the top results. Me and Tony, there's a video, there's audio, listen to it. That's there forever. That will be there for another 10 years, 100 years, who knows, forever, constantly talking, creating connections with people. Think about the ability to do that one meeting, one meeting. That, that's the power of that metric if you choose it for a B2B podcast. Great question. Thank you very much, Vedant. Let me take maybe one more question. Sahitya asks, what do you do if your brand is not well known and you don't have a large audience? Fantastic. More reason to start a podcast. Everybody has a network. Everybody has something to talk about. If you don't, then why are you in business? You may not have something which is exciting and sexy like machine learning or blockchain or anything that's relevant right now in the news, but you have something relevant to somebody. And that's the point. Your podcast is about planting a flag and allowing people to rally around that flag. We are going to talk about this. It may not be interesting to 95% of the people out there in the world, but I don't care about the 95%. Remember, as a podcast host, you're not a politician. You're a rock star. Think about it like that. A politician wins by winning 51% of the market. You don't have to play that game because 51% of the market is everything to everybody. You want to be something to somebody. And some of the best podcasts have a hundred listeners, but I guarantee those hundred listeners care. And that's the point. Plant a flag, allow people to rally around. You can do that with a hundred people, the smallest startup. And you know what? If you've just started and you're just a really early stage startup, even better. Allow people to join the journey. People love journeys. Every single Hollywood movie, every single book you've ever written is a journey. Read the book, Joseph Campbell, The Hero's Journey. It's all a journey. And if you can get to if you can get people on board with that journey early on, even better. So if you have two listeners, fantastic. If you're 2,000 listeners, more than enough. If you've got 2 million, even better. The point is that you don't have to be a politician. Be a rock star. And rock stars, be something to somebody. Speak the truth. Plant that flag. Build your tribe. But remember, just get started. So how do you do that? I'm going to give you the last slide where you can email me get the PDF. There you go, folks. You've sat and enjoyed, hopefully, this webinar podcast, live podcast with me for 35, 40 minutes. I've, thank you very much for your questions. Here's how you can get the PDF, gb at pickle.com. GB is me. This is the first in the series of the podcasting for brands done live. This will happen every single week. If you're listening to the podcast version of it, then you can get all the episodes and all the insights. If you're here live, thank you very much for joining me at the beginning of this journey. And hopefully I'll see you as a regular podcast contributor to this webinar series with your questions. And hopefully I can help you start the journey and as with all journeys, pick a good bunch of people to take the journey with you. So we're here, podcast agency B2B. If you have any questions, you can email me here. Otherwise, if you just want the PDF, here is the email address that you need. My name's Graham Brown. This is Podcasting for Brands live. Thank you very much, folks. Really enjoyed it. And I will see you next week. Goodbye.